Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here because we are working on the Scottish Claymore sword. It's going to be a lot of fun. I need to work out what it is that I'm going to do to the guard. So thank you for joining me today as, as we take you along this journey. So this is where I stopped off on yesterday's video. We have a slot going across the top that will accept the sword. And actually, I didn't think it would, but I just measured it and it will, which is great. And I achieved that by wiggling it side to side to get that little extra 0.3 of a millimeter on either side of width. Now the issue, however, is the, the tang hole. So not just the slot that accepts the sword itself, but the tang hole, the hole that allows the tang to go in and allows it to actually go up. That little hole right there, that is, that's going to be tricky to make because I'm about to be flat out of cutter, as you can see. And I need lots of that cutter to be able to get through the damn material. <laughs> Well, since I'm reckless, I clearly don't seem to mind the ridiculously stupid idea of having a cutter in a collet only an eighth of an inch. We're going to see if we can poke a hole for it and maybe even get the slot for the tang all done on here with only the fit up needing to be done on the file. If not, I'm going to have to put a drill bit in and, and file the whole thing out. <laughs> have we made it? It's so close. Right, have we made it? Uh, mm. No. We have, however, exceeded the length of our tool there, though. Uh, maybe we'll try a sixteenth of an inch inside the collet. Maybe that'll work. Yes! We're through! With like one thousandth of an inch to spare. No! Okay. Abort mission. We've got a problem. Oh, golly dokily. You know how it goes now. Yep, got to do it all by hand. Guess who's a little bit of a numpty? Yes, that's me. Um, I just realized now I have a hole going all the way through. I have an index on the back side, which at least means that I can turn this over and use a shorter end mill and do it in the mill. So problem averted. I don't have to try and make this into a long slot uh, with files. We can get it started on the mill and then go to the files. Metal splinter. Ow, I don't like metal splinters. Success! We have a slot going through it. This is going to be ready for the final fit up, but only once the tang is ready for it. And as you can see, it tapers in the wrong direction. So back to the grinding room. I'm going to bring this down so the thickest part of the tang is right there. And then we can do the final fit up of the guard and then the final shaping and then start working. Yeah, it's fun. I do like this. This is very good fun because I'm starting to just ever so slightly get a grip of what it is that I'm doing with the sword making. And that's enjoyable. That's, that's a nice thing because because even though I'm trying something that I've never done before, which is a blade that's obnoxiously long, one meter, one centimeter blade, it's actually not as daunting as I thought it would be just three, four months ago when I made my first sword. I was just picking it up in the office and I was going to myself, holy moly, this thing is tiny. It's a toothpick. Because already in that short amount of time after making what, four, four is this my fourth sword? Something like, I have no idea. Already I'm making something that's a meter ten long. Frankly, I'm shocked. I'm just thrilled. Anyway, into the grinding room. Let's work on the tang. <laughs> So it's pretty cold in here, so I've lit the forge. Since I'm gonna be sat down for a while, trying to open this up enough that this fits all the way up there. It's filing time.
Okay, so I have a very nice tight fit all the way up there once it's hammered. Now, this guard is straight right now, and the traditional Scottish Claymore guard is slightly different in style, but one of the really, really key things about the Claymore, not that I'm necessarily following a whole lot of the key things about it, considering this is Damascus and this guard doesn't have the four holes, but the guard points forwards on the blade. And so, of course, that means that I need to point this guard forward on the blade. And with a little heat, that shape should approach a little more of the angle that was needed. A little cold tweaking might fix that. It's rounder than a traditional Scottish guard, but I kind of like the looks and I like how that works with these forged bulbous ends. This here, this point, needs a little shaping so that it matches up evenly on either side with the fuller lines of the sword itself. So I'm gonna let this cool down. I'm gonna grind that. I'm also going to fix this thickness either side. Obviously it's off center. And square off the face upon which the handle material is gonna meet so that it uh, means everything's square. <laughs> Pretty, pretty standard thought, isn't it? Make something square to make it square. I didn't have a way to finish that sentence, but uh, let's, uh, let's start doing some more work. So I've now got the big contact wheel on. This is an eight inch contact wheel. And I'm forming the facets and the chamfers that shape the guard. We're at 60 grit. And what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna go 120 and yeah, 240 grit also. And then back to 60 grit to flatten off the backside before we get the patina we want on it by putting it into the forge. Ladies and gentlemen, as I wait for the forge to heat up, our favorite time is upon us. This is the time of the project that I like the most. That's right, it's time for me to start tearing up sandpaper and going from 180 grit all the way to 400. Let's roll the montage. The 
forged, finished, and you know, after a little wire wheel and a, and a little bit of oil, that is ready, done, capiche, finished. The blade is at 120 grit on one side. I've got an enormous amount of hand sanding to do on tomorrow's episode. I'm gonna hand sand the blade. I'm gonna work on the pommel. And we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna hopefully make some good progress. Wonderful bringing you along with these daily builds. Thank you very much, and I will see you tomorrow on the next episode.